Today is the second day of January, 2016. Previously, we have had two sessions of introducing Harindranath Chattopadhyay to our readers. Today, the third and final session, and the most important, is Sri Aurobindo on Haran. Much of this I have garnered from the future poetry and the new volume of collected works of Sri Aurobindo, Letters on Poetry and Art. Sri Aurobindo writes, Harindranath has an unfailing sense of beauty and rhythm. Parentheses, or had before he became a Bolshevik and Gandhist. End parentheses. While your writing is very unequal. This is probably referring to Amal Kiran. But I do not suppose he will ever do much better than he has done or produce anything that will put him in the first rank of poets unless he changes greatly in the future. This letter then to Sri Aurobindo. You write in your note to Haran of 24 January 1935 about Toru Dutt and Romesh of the same ilk and Sarojini Naidu that you know of no other Indian than Sarojini to have published in English anything that is really alive and strong and original. I can understand you forgetting your own work, but how is it that you have omitted Harin himself? Surely he has published things that are bound to remain. Prithvi Singh was telling me that cultivation of literature here hasn't much sense, since none will be able to get first class or outclass Tagore. He must always remain the only brilliant star in literature. Others won't even get a chance to shine by his side, not to speak of outshining him. Only Dilip can be somehow given a second-class privilege, but that too for his prose and not for poetry. He further asserts that yoga has no power to bring any pursuit, literature, painting, etc., to a height of perfection. Sri Aurobindo writes, I don't agree with Prithvi Singh. If a man has a capacity for poetry or anything else, it will certainly come out and rise to greater heights than it would have done elsewhere. Witness Dilip, who was unable to write poetry till he came here, though he had the instinct and the suppressed power in him. Nishikanta, whose full flow came only here. Arjava, Punjalal, whose recent poems in Gujarati seem to me to have an extraordinary beauty, though I admit that I am no expert there. Harin wrote beautifully before, but the sovereign excellence of his recent poetry is new. I look at these things from a more impersonal, or if you like, a personal impersonal point of view. There is, on one side, my effort at perfection for myself and others, and for the possibility of a greater perfection in a changed humanity. On the other side, there is a play of forces, some favoring it, but more trying to prevent it. 
The challenge I speak of comes from these forces. On one side, it is a pressure from the pro forces saying, your work is not good enough, learn to do better. On the other, it is a pressure from the contrary forces saying, your work, it is a delusion and error, a poor mediocre thing and we will trample and break it to pieces. Part of the work was an attempt to inspire a poetry which would express first the aspiration and labor towards the spiritual or divine and afterwards its realization and manifestation. There are many who write poetry in the ashram under this impulse, but in the languages which I know best, parentheses, English perfectly, at least I hope so, Bengali a little, end parentheses, there were four here whose work seemed to me to contain already in a fairly ample way the ripe possibility of the thing I wanted. Yourself, Philippe Komaroy, Arjava, Amal Harim. Sri Aurobindo is referring here to when he says yourself, he puts Dilip Kumaroy in parentheses. So these are the four Dilip Kumaroy, Arjava, Amal, and Harim. Sri Aurobindo continues Harim's poetry deals very skillfully with spiritual ideas or feelings through the language of the emotion and the poetic imagination and intelligence. No difficulty there. I had not in view the dark well poems when I wrote about Harun. I was thinking of his ordinary way of writing. If I remember right, the dark well poems came from the inner mind center some from the higher mind. Other planes may have sent their message to his mind to put in poetic speech, but the main worker was the poetic intelligence, which took what was given and turned it into something very vivid, colored, and beautiful. I can understand very well what Surawadi objects to in Haran's poetry, though his expression of it is absurdly exaggerated, parentheses, trash, end parentheses. And he may be right in thinking it an exotic in English literature, but I am under the impression that Haran will stand in spite of that though he has still to write something so sovereign in its own kind as to put all doubt out of court. But even as it is, the poetic quality of his work appears to me undeniable. 1st October 1932. Sri Aurobindo continues, Arin's new poems are a little difficult to follow sometimes because they render a special form of experience, but they are very powerful and genuine. He has the eye of one who can see in the occult sense. 3rd December 1933. Question put to Sri Aurobindo. Do poets like Harin feel more than others, or is it rather that they simply express themselves better? Sri Aurobindo. 
It depends on the poet. Aaron expresses what he sees through feeling, perception, or actual vision. He was strongly impressed and he wrote. But it is quite possible that the word written may bring a stronger feeling or more vivid and extended experience to some reader than anything the poet actually felt. 21st September 1933. Sri Aurobindo continues. The following lines from one of Harin's poems seems to indicate an overmind view of the worlds. He quotes these lines. Whatever I contact, I sum up in an instant as my own. All life around me, I become a rarefied, immense, alone, and slowly in myself I seem infinitudes of worlds and men. Sri Aurobindo, yes, it is the overmind view, but it can be felt in any of the higher planes, intuition, illumined, or higher mind. Something of it can be thrown by reflection even into the liberated mind and vital. I mean, when there comes into them the sense of the cosmic self, the cosmic mind and vital, etc., and they are no longer shut up within individual limits. 9 July 1934. Another letter to Sri Aurobindo. Look at Haran's poetry. We're so ecstatic over it here. But outside he hardly gets a good audience. Not even Krishna Prem seems to like his poetry. Sri Aurobindo replies, I don't think I can put as much value on Krishna Prem's literary judgments as on his comments on yoga, etc. Some of his criticisms astonished me. For instance, he found fault with Harin for using rhymes which Shelley uses freely in his best poems. You must remember also that Harin's poetry has been appreciated by some of the finest English writers like Binion and Delamare. But anyway, all growing writers, parentheses, unless they are very lucky, end parentheses, meet with depreciation and criticism at first until people get accustomed to it. Perhaps if Harin had published his poems under the name, let us say, of Harry Chatto, he would have succeeded by this time and no one would have talked of oriental ineptness. 10 December 1935. And note here, I recently received a book of poetry from Ravi at the Ashram School, and it's the Chatto Book of Poetry. So I believe Sri Aurobindo was aware of this. Uh, another letter to Sri Aurobindo, brief. When he was here, Haran wrote things full of psychic perception, like infinitude in form, illimitable power and love conjoint. The utter peace takes all the world by storm. Now he has gone back to his old ways and seems to have forgotten the great visions he had. Do you think the poetry he wrote here was not really his, but was prepared by beings of a higher plane, and Haran simply wrote it down? Sri Aurobindo, yes, that is 
Aaron was a medium. The poetry came into him from a plane which he did not possess. Also, whatever visions or experiences he had were poured into him by the mother. But his personal being remained without any radical uplifting or alteration. 29 October 1936. This section in the volume Letters on Poetry and Art is entitled The Sources of Inspiration of Haran and of Arjava. We were wondering from what plane Haran gets his poetry. We should also like to know from what plane Arjava has his source of inspiration. And is it possible to tell us in brief what peculiarity of vision and style each of us has? Sri Aurobindo. I doubt whether I can enter into all that just now, or whether it would be useful. It would mean a critical appreciation of all of you, for which I have no time. Parentheses. I have some poems to finish and some things to write on yoga which are waiting for a long time so I cannot deviate into anything like that. End parentheses. All I can say is that Arjava writes most often from the plane of inner thought and occult vision. Parentheses. The plane indicated in yoga by the forehead center. End parentheses. As for Harin, I can't say. He varies and most often writes from several planes at a time. So it is impossible to define. 2nd December 1933. And then the next section in the same volume, Variations in Inspiration. Question. It is queer that one writes a few lines in no time and the rest, perhaps, at no time. Sri Aurobindo. This is too cryptic for me. I may say, however, that inspiration for poetry is always an uncertain thing. Parentheses. Except for a phenomenon like Haran. End of parentheses. Sometimes it comes in a rush. Sometimes one has to labor for days to get a poem right. Sometimes it does not come at all. Besides, each poet is treated by the muse in a different way. 24th August. 1935. Sri Aurobindo continues. As I have already said once, I do not like to write anything disparaging or discouraging for those whom I cannot help to do better. I received much poetry from Indian writers for review in the Arya, but I always refrained because I would have had to be very severe. I wrote only about Harindranath because there I could sincerely, and I think justly, write unqualified praise. 25th May 1931. Sri Aurobindo continues, as for Haran, I never object to what he may invent in language or in grammar, because so much mastery of language carries with it a right to take liberties with it. But I am more severe with myself and others. Of course, there are artists whose temperament is so buoyant that they keep the flow at command, almost 
like Aaron with his poems, painting or working every day for hours together. Others cannot. They work sometimes more, sometimes less, sometimes after long intervals. 27 September 1934. And this concludes our introduction to Harendranath. From here, we will begin many, many sessions on his poetry read by different people. Thank you. <laughs>